Hi, welcome to Astrologer Angel for June 24th. It's been a fun show. I hope you enjoy it. We're talking about relationships this week. So take care. Have a good week. Hello, welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. You are listening to the Astro Energy Show for Wednesday, June 24th at 5 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon on in 2015. So it's good to have you here. And I am in Orlando, Florida, where we are learning how to live in a terrarium. It's about, well, I was driving home from a friend's house today, so big shout out to my friend Tracy. And uh, it was said, it said on my car's, I can't even talk, it said on my car's odometer and temperature that it was 97 degrees. And then I get home and I wanted to double check it because my daughter has tennis lessons in about an hour and a half. And it said it was 91 degrees. But I believe my car because I went outside and it was hot and it was humid. So are you feeling all this fire energy? I certainly am. So I'm staying indoors or going swimming. That's what I'm doing. Anyway, so let's get on with the show here. Today, we are talking about relationships. And it is so appropriate because Venus is now in Leo. She's at 16 degrees and she's within four degrees of Jupiter. And Venus is the goddess of love and Leo is the ruler of romance in a chart. So the two together, love's a poppin'. And let's see what else do we have. Mars is no longer in Gemini. It is in Cancer, zero degrees and 12 minutes. He went in this morning. And he is within three degrees of the sun at three degrees of cancer. So now we are in the sign of cancer. And that reminds me, I'm going to give a shout out to my mom, whose birthday is tomorrow. So happy birthday, mom. She doesn't listen, but it's the spirit that counts. (laughs) And let's see. And we have a Saturn at 29 Scorpio retrograde. So he's been in Scorpio for almost a week. And the moon is at 7 degrees Libra, conjunct a 5 degree north node in Libra also. So that is pretty good energy, uh, moon in Libra and Venus in Leo, to talk about romance and creativity and children. So today we're going to talk about relationships, which is Leo's domain. And also I suppose Libra's domain, because Libra rules marriage and partnership. But um, before we do that, I'm just going to double check and see what else I can tell you here. So Mercury is in Gemini. And of course, now Mercury is direct. And he went retrograde at 13 degrees. So we're still three degrees away from getting out of the shadow. Um, I still haven't found my daily ephemera. So I only have more general ephemera. So that's, you know, shame on me. I can do a, a chart if we need to get down to the fine tuning, I can do that. But I can't tell you exact times like I normally do, which is kind of a drag. So I'm looking around trying to figure out where it could be. And I guess I'll have to look harder after the show. Anyway, um, so relationships. When you talk about relationships in astrology, you are talking about a lot of the um, interpersonal planets or the ones that are quicker moving and the ones that rule the lower half of the zodiac chart, which would be Sun, Mercury, Moon, Venus, Mars, and pretty much those are the main planets for interpersonal, and then you get into transpersonal. And so interpersonal, actually I should clarify, interpersonal is the part of the chart where you develop a side of yourself, you know, something about yourself, the lower half of the chart. And transpersonal is the upper half of the chart, which rules the slower, it's ruled by the slower moving energy. So um, Uranus, Saturn, uh, Pluto, oh, Neptune, my mind went blank there for a minute, and Jupiter. So those planets 
help you relate to other people, but I feel that a lot of that can be more pure energy, and I personally look more towards most of the quicker moving planets for the initial reaction to relationships, with the exception of Saturn. Saturn is a very big planet for getting along. And Saturn cycles can affect your relationships. So if you have compatible Saturns, which is your life purpose, um, you're going to have compatibility of life purpose, which, let's be real, is going to carry you a lot farther if those are compatible. If they're not compatible, it may not be something that comes up right away, but it will eventually come up. And personally, I speak from experience. Saturn does affect the relationship because Saturn is about how you view the world and your place in it, where your drive is to accomplish something in the world. And it can also mean your career. But um, say, for example, one partner has Saturn in Pisces and the other has Saturn in Sagittarius those signs square each other. The commonalities would be spirituality, which they both do have a strong connection to spirituality. But if one of them or both of them have the energy of restriction coming out of that, they may not connect to that spiritual side. And that would be, I would say, probably the biggest commonality is the spirituality. But then you have them in conflict because they square each other on the, in the zodiac. So you have Saturn and Sagittarius saying, let's do things out in the world, physical manner, um, taking action, going places, meeting people. And you have Pisces going, but I want to just sit home and meditate. I want to connect to my source and the center of things and very introspective, whereas Saturn and Sagittarius can be very external and um, active. So overall, they may not, even if they have common planets in other places, um, the common planets will definitely give them a connection, but Saturn, if it's not in positive aspect, can really become an overall detriment to the relationship and seeing eye to eye and moving forward together. Like that old saying, um, you know, the, the science, I don't know the exact one, so I'm paraphrasing about couples do not, they walk together in the same direction. That's the, the gist of it basically is that you're not at, against each other but you're walking together in the same direction and that's what you want in a chart and so having Saturn compatible will help give that to you then you have the sun and in relationships of course sun stands for ego so our egos may be attracted to another ego energy but have Venus in square or opposition and at odds but Venus opposite Venus can be very attracted to each other because when planets are opposite, they will become more attracted to each other in trying to get the part of their personality that they are missing or repressing. So that can be a very powerful attraction. The only thing with opposites attracting, of course, is that if you're too into making the other person like you, it will be very frustrating. If you don't accept them for what they can give you, being an opposite energy, it's going to be a lot more difficult. But if you look at the other person as saying, wow, I would do it this way, but that person balances me because they take care of that part of the relationship. And, you know, so there's, there will say just, for example, um, Scorpio and Taurus. So Scorpio is about... Um, the deep, mysterious side of commitment, and Taurus is about the money side. Now, those are general inclinations of the signs, but Scorpio sometimes can be bogged down with the emotional energy, like water signs can be, and Taurus is very pragmatic, earth-based energy. So, you know, when it comes to money, the Taurus person may 
really keep the relationship on track for money. And the Scorpio person will really connect and understand at a deeper level and be able to make quicker decisions. So they balance each other out that way. But if they try to make the other person like themselves, you're going to run into trouble. And I think that's true with relationships in general. Okay, so sun represents your ego, and you may have a sun sign that you are particularly attracted to. Now, I have a moon in the first house, which is the ego energy, and it's in Scorpio. And I have Neptune there, which is an idealistic energy. So moon conjunct Neptune means that there is an idealized version of sexual energy and commitment. And so, and interestingly, being the moon, the moon means that there may be some elements of my relationship with my mother that come out in relationships. And this is exactly what happened when I had a long-term relationship. It was very much like being with my mother. But if you are aware of that, and when you have Neptune conjunct your moon, you, unless the Neptune is retrograde, you can have an ideal of someone that isn't ever going to be fulfilled. And when Neptune's retrograde conjunct the moon, you can see people more for who they are and much more in a practical light. So that can be beneficial. But um, generally there can even be somewhat of an addiction energy when you get into Neptune conjunct moon. Um, I t- I don't know if it's completely addiction, but there could be a sense of purpose, especially if the other person has a planet close to your moon Neptune conjunction. There could be like a karmic connection, which Neptune also represents karmic connections from past lives. So there's definitely um, a karmic purpose to the relationship when that happens. And so um, look at where the moon is. Look at what sign the moon is in. And this goes for all of the close-in planets. You want to know which house it's in, how the energy expresses, and where the other person's planets are in relationship to your planets. Are they in a compatible element? You know, earth, fire, water, or air? Are they in a detrimental sign? Are they going to restrict you, as in, say, Saturn conjunct your Venus or their Saturn on your Venus? Their Saturn on your Venus can mean that person is totally reliable to you, which is the Capricorn energy, very reliable, dutiful. But it can also mean that they want to control you and may have fears around the relationship, which is also that uh, Capricornian energy. So you have to see where the other planets lie and if you have enough energy in positive areas to overcome what could be a very controlling relationship. Um, what you want in a compatibility chart, and there are a few different kinds of compatibility charts. There's a synastry, and there is, let me just click over here and um, tell you a composite, which is where you take the the energy and, let's see, you, you bring them together. I don't ever use composite charts, so I apologize for not being completely aware um, there's a relationship in a composite and I believe composite is when you take the two uh, the two charts each individual birth sign birth energy uh, the time and place you were born and it basically splits the difference and gives you a chart that makes up a time and place that is exactly blended between the two of you. And so it basically becomes a chart of the relationship based on the difference between your birth times. A relationship chart takes the two. Let me see. Synastry takes the two. I'm going to go with that one because that's the one I always use. <laughs> Synastry will put the two together, one next to the other, so you can see where they fall. And now, I again, I knew this, and I completely forgot what it is. <laughs> A relationship chart was because I never use it. Um, I'm trying to. I'm sorry. I apologize for this. I really try to have my act together when I come on here, but um, sometimes I get myself. I back myself into a corner. <laughs> this is one of them. Um, so I'm going to just do that real quick here. 
Um, just looking at it real quick to see. I know it. I know what it is, and I'm going to read it later. I'm going to like, I knew what that was, but I totally spaced it out right now. So if anybody in the chat room has this program and knows what the relationship one is, please tell me. There's one where it splits the difference and one where it finds the midpoint of – there's one in time and space and one in astrological terms, I believe. So that's probably what's confusing me. And see, I'm not perfect. I admit it. I'm a Virgo who admits she's not perfect. Is that even possible? Anyway, um, okay, so – Sun, ego, Mercury is how you communicate. You want that in good good uh, energy. Some people don't mind having one person who's chatty and one person who is quiet. The chatty one may make up for the quiet one. And again, it's opposites attract. But I personally like someone who is communicative because I'm communicative. So having somebody with, say, an air Mercury would be good for me because I need somebody to communicate. And also Mercury... Uh, well, I was going to say Mercury and a water sign, but Mercury and water signs tend to be more quiet or they are more passive, aggressive in how they communicate. So they're not going to necessarily come straight out and say it like a, a fire energy would, like Mercury and Leo. They're going to do it behind the scenes and they might do a little more manipulation uh, in getting it, emotional manipulation to get their point across. So um venus of course goddess of love you want positive aspects to venus again if you're looking for a commitment i would look for a positive aspect to saturn but not necessarily a conjunction to saturn um a sextile or a trine so 60 degrees apart or 120 degrees apart would be good because then they're working in tandem and they're not conflicting um also mars mars is sexual energy and masculine drive so Mars represents the male, Venus represents the female, sun the man, moon the woman. So you see where those are and you look at which house it's in and you can tell by looking where these planets fall the likelihood of meeting someone in a relationship with transits to that house. If you're Venus, say I'm looking at what's going on in the sky now, the chart for now, it says Venus in the ninth house. So Venus conjunct Jupiter in the ninth house. Jupiter represents the ninth house. He rules the ninth house. And Venus is partner or love. Um, so say you're looking for a woman to marry, and that falls in your house of travel and your house of spirituality and your house of uh, education. So you're likely to find someone taking a course at college, going to college, um, Training somebody if you're if you're in a company and you do training that's a really great place to find them um, church because of the spiritual connection looking in church or some spiritual activities such as yoga or meditation um, and also travel on vacation so when if you say you had Venus conjunct Jupiter in your chart and you had Mars going over that and you were looking for love. Mars may bring you someone who is of another ethnicity, which is, again, also the ninth house. So you look for the transits and where they, where these planets fall in your chart. Um, my friend today that I was visiting said, brought up the idea of where the moon falls in a chart of a man is what they look for in a woman. I, I tend to agree because I know that we do look for a partner who is similar to our parent of whichever gender we have most issues with, in my opinion. Um, I think that's just kind of psychology, but astrology seems to always bring that because in the way I read charts, the seventh house of marriage and partnership represents the parent of the gender you're attracted to. So if you're straight, it's the opposite sex. If you're gay, it's the same sex. And then the next house would be the parent of the opposite of that. So whichever one the seventh is, the eighth is their partner. And so that would be the other parent. And so, and it's also the house of commitment. So since that rules those parents in relationship and how we express our energy in relationship, you look at the transits and what planets are there and you can glean what's going on for marriage and commitment there. And 
of course, romance is ruled by the fifth house and the sign of Leo. So if you have planets in Leo or if you have planets in the fifth house, that can also be a trigger to a relationship. And personally, I also found uh, the fourth house, which is home and family. When you have major planets transiting Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, that can also bring someone into your life that creates a home and family for you. So there's a lot to go over with relationships, but I think the best way to learn it is to just do it. So hopefully you will gain a little more knowledge from that, even though I back myself into a corner. I'll have to find that out. So that's what I like to do. If I don't know something off the top of my head, I will look it up for you and I will tell you next week. So I'm going to find out for you and tell you next week instead of wasting time looking for it about relationship charts. Okay, so let's go to our calls because we have a lot today. 505. Hi, who is this? Hi, Shelly. Uh, my name is Patricia. Um, Hi. I haven't Do you go by Patricia? Patricia. Um, are you January 24th? Yes, yes. Okay. I got you down as Tricia, interestingly, so I will change oh. that to Patricia. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So um, what can I do for you today? Well, gosh, I called in because you were talking about relationships, and I know I <laughs> talked to you quite a long time ago, and you mentioned that there was an amazing relationship coming towards me. I have not found it yet. Well, what <laughs> the heck? Have not found me. Now I told you, the universe needs <laughs> to deliver. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. Well, let's I believe it, but I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> um. And I think by the end of the year is when it's coming because, like oh. I just said, um, Saturn will be crossing your um, your IC. No, wait a minute. MC. IC. IC. Another thing. See, another thing I get confused is the MC and the IC. To me, Midheaven is MC, but I think it's IC. And, and the bottom of the chart, I don't know why I cannot retain some of this. Anyway, um, Saturn's going across your fourth house cusp. Okay, uh-huh. and that means that it's connecting to your um, family. Again, like I said, not only family and the mother energy, the nurturing energy, but your Venus. So that's a definite, and it's expansion. Um, Sagittarius, the sign of Sagittarius is about expansion. And so you're having, and also Saturn. Saturn is uh, ownership. And taking responsibility. So as Saturn goes over your Venus, which is going to be probably earlier next year, it will cross the cusp of your fourth house, which is a trigger, and then it will hit your Venus. But I I think it may actually retrograde before then. Hang on one second, and I will tell you for sure. I'm just trying to give you some influences of what I'm seeing here, if that's at all helpful. Um, Did you want something more specific? Oh, no, I was just wondering, you know, what to look for. I mean, because okay. I, um, I I'm starting to get out there now, and I, sure. I've i met some people, oh, yeah. but they just don't trigger it for me. <laughs> January is awesome for you because <laughs> you have um, Saturn going right into your house, home, and family, and by, let me see, as it moves. So Saturn will uh, be just one degree away from your Venus. And then he will retrograde. So it looks to me like you're going to have some type of situation arise where you meet someone foreign because in January you also have Venus on your Venus. So on the 14th of January you have a Venus conjunction right down there with Saturn. And so that means that you probably are going to meet someone who doesn't live close by. And then Saturn retrogrades um, in, what did I say, March? See... Um, hang on one second. This is what happens when you start to be intuitive about astrology is you totally um, do not remember details because you end up channeling from the right side of your brain and every all details uh-huh. go. Um, yeah, so Saturn retrogrades in April. Oh, that's, sorry. <sighs> I'm, on the, I'm on 2017. See, now I feel silly, <laughs> but it's in March. 2016, it retrogrades in March, the end of March. But, you know, I would say from Christmas on through March, you're going to have a lot of strong energy about commitment around uh, romance or love related to the family. And also in your chart, you have Pluto just into your house of romance, which is the fifth house. And so as he moves 
further and further through there, it's about creating the structure of romance. So the one thing I would say is Pluto is definitely going to be changing your rules about who it is you want to be with. That's going to be challenged. Okay, so like you say, okay, this is the kind of person. He has to be this and this and this. Um, that's going to be challenged. Uh, it's Since Pluto just got into your house of romance, that's part of the story. Okay? Right okay. now, literally, Venus is two degrees away from your Mars. So Venus, love transiting on you, your um, masculine sexual side. So it's like you're really attractive to the opposite sex, but I think on some level you are holding it back and not necessarily letting it shine because, of course, Leo in the 12th house says, I'm going to hide some of that because I need to I need to have this unspoken side of me taken care of. Okay, so it's like you want to hide that. That's what, yeah. that's what your nature is doing. Mars in the 12th is like, I'm going to take action that I know about but other people may not know. When you have triggers to that, it means that there's something covert going on. And so that tells me Venus conjunct Jupiter, right? I mean, literally, Venus is two degrees before hitting your Mars and Jupiter's two degrees after your Mars. So that means Mars is dead in the middle between Venus and Jupiter, which is expansion of romance, but it's hidden. So there's probably somebody who is not necessarily coming forward and telling you that they have attraction to you. Yeah, I think there is somebody like that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I had a dream where my um, guide told me, and this is out of the blue and I had no clue what this means, but mm-hmm. I heard the words Venus conjunct Saturn, and you, you just did? said it. Yes, That's I amazing. heard that in my dream. That's exactly what I was talking about before I brought you yes. on. And I know. also what I talked about just now when your Saturn's going over your Venus next year. So yeah. I would say that's pretty prophetic. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I need to keep my eyes open around <laughs> between now well, and January. I, I can tell and you when different. Jupiter gets into Virgo, and by the end of this year, Jupiter will be in your first house, which means Jupiter gets out of that hidden quality. And it also, in the process, will be transiting over your – I mean – Okay, let's back up. Jupiter goes into Virgo around September 17th of this year. By the end of the year, he will get really far, which is pretty amazing. I mean, Jupiter goes uh, one whole sign in a year. So, sorry, my throat's a little dry. Um, By the end of the year, he'll be already at 21 degrees of Virgo. So he's pretty good into your first house. Um, So right there around Halloween, you're going to have Jupiter break into your first house, and that means things will come out into the open. But just before then, he's going to hit your Uranus, and he's going to hit your Pluto, okay, between September and, I'll just look it up so I can be succinct. I'm trying to talk slower. I don't know if my all, my longtime listeners notice this. I'm trying to take my time saying things because I do spit things out rather rapidly, and I don't want people to miss what I'm saying. Okay, so by middle of October, Jupiter will literally be hitting your first house, creating an expansion of how you see yourself. But just before that, between September 17th and the end of October, so like those three weeks, Jupiter will be hitting Uranus, which is the unexpected. So there's going to be some kind of, um, I would say, a work or a health issue come up for you. And then Pluto, which is life-changing. And that's probably work... I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be – it's something related to service, like all the Virgo energy, service, truth, um, shift and change, major life change, which is Pluto. Pluto says, okay, things are going to be different, and now you're going on to the next phase of your life. And then Jupiter comes out into the open and says, hey, I'm here. And Venus will be long gone by then, but – um Anyway, when Jupiter gets there, you're going to expand that area of your life, and I think that will help bring information out to the open. And let me see Mars. Let me look at where Mars is, and then I'm going to move on real quick here. So yeah, I'm looking for a whole new like work change too. I mean, I know you? I'm ready. It's gonna happen. I I mean, I yeah. need to 
understand I need to really shine and mm-hmm. help, you know, be of service. Where yeah, I, where that's the Virgo in your chart. Be. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a Virgo rising. So and it's interesting because I have four planets in Virgo. And no matter how much I keep trying to do this specific creative side of my life, I'm still attracted to helping others like that seems to be the main reason to be in my life right now. And so I'm already and, and I do this because I'm so keyed into the energies. I pick up things before we actually go into that ingress of the planet going into that sign. And I already feel that I'm going to have a major shift, not that I'm already not already doing, because I do. I have the show every week for free and help people as much as I can. But there's going to be even more of that, you know, that expansion. When Jupiter hits Virgo, that side of us is coming out, and people born in the early to mid-60s are going to feel it the strongest because they have the Uranus-Pluto conjunction in Virgo. So that's hitting you before the end of this year. Jupiter on Uranus-Pluto major shift, major shift in ideology around health care, around helping others, service to others. Think Mother Teresa. She was a Virgo, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to say I for sure. I think her. she's a Virgo. I saw her in my dreams. Did you? That's yes, amazing. she appeared in my dreams. So, gosh, wow. you're like right on target with yeah, that. Yeah, and, and <laughs> that's confirmation. I mean, definitely, yeah. you know, picking up stuff. You're You're also getting a lot of information so pay attention to that so just follow your inner wisdom um you do have something like neptune is so slow i I mean i don't want to say oh yeah when neptune hits jupiter but when neptune hits jupiter which for you um is 13 degrees also then that's let me see hang on a second it's at nine degrees right now and the problem with neptune is he just takes forever to go through a sign so by May of 2017, Neptune will be right there conjunct your cusp of marriage and also your Jupiter, which is expansion and new stuff. The only thing I caution you with on this is not watch out for that which you are kidding yourself about because Jupiter wants to put the accelerator on whatever it touches. And so if Neptune is right there on Jupiter, it's going to be like excesses and it's going. It may not be something you can even fight against. I'll be honest with you. Um, the the groundedness for you is going to be Uranus and Pluto in your chart, which balances out the Pisces, because Jupiter and Pisces, and it's directly opposite Pluto and Virgo. That's what's going to ground you. But at Neptune oppose Uranus Pluto, major major life change May, May of 2017. Okay, this is like probably marriage. Wow. Like okay. idealistic marriage, okay? Okay. So well, yeah. before the end of the year, when I meet that individual, I promise you, I'm going to call you for compatibility because I want to make sure awesome. this person is the right one. Awesome. So. Well, I'm going to tell you, you've got Mars and Leo, so there's a certain amount of that fire energy you're attracted to, and again, because it's in Pisces' house, you're going to say that person is like idealized. So I wouldn't be surprised if you meet a fire sign that is just like, he's amazing, and he's going to say, yes, I am. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, um, okay. yeah, and you have Venus in a fire sign as well. So you have both Venus and Mars in fire signs. So um, the only thing with fire signs is a battle for control and, and attention. But oh, if yeah. you both enjoy, say, outdoors activities and dramatic things, theater or going places. And Leo Energy loves to have uh, dinner together and go to new restaurants and new places like that, the theater, whatever. If you do those type of things, like channel the energy into something that you both can enjoy, that can work. It's when the ego gets involved and somebody has to have all the attention. So that's where the hurt feelings are. But you have two planets in fire that both relate to um, relationships. So I wouldn't be surprised if you ended up with a fire sign. Yeah, I just divorced one. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, but you know what? I Unless you learn your lesson. <laughs> um, yeah, you've got Capricorn in your house of romance. So, you know, if you could find someone who's an earth sign, That could actually work out pretty good for you as well if you found a Capricorn because 
that will be your moon. They may remind you of your mother or your home, and then it will be a strong connection there. That goes compatible with your Pisces, which is marriage and yeah. partnership. And, um, yeah. And you have Uranus in the house of marriage and partnership right now in Aries, and the commitment, and excuse me, not marriage and partnership, partnership commitment. So it's it's really strong about needing freedom from commitment right yeah. now. So until he gets out into your ninth house, there's going to be a strong need for freedom. So which is Sagittarius? Yeah, that I that feel would it. be you. So, yeah. Well, Patricia, it was good talking to you again. Thank you for the call. Let me know, please, please, please. I love hearing about yeah. your stories. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Bless you're welcome. You so many blessings. Oh, you're Thank so you. sweet. Thanks. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Welcome. Okay, just getting up to speed, but I'm going to take a quick break and we'll be back in one minute. In these days of stress, running around, responsibilities, we all need a little place to go to to make it all better. Is that place sports, football, or maybe you like to garden, paint, or just listen to music? Wherever your happy place is, you can find a shirt or mug to reflect that happy place. At myhappyplace.rocks, We have a variety of lifestyle products, including iPhone cases, pajamas, and pet items, all with beautiful, colorful designs, which help us go to our happy place. Stop by on the web for great gift ideas for others and yourself. MyHappyPlace.rocks Lenny Pickett appears courtesy of Random Act Records. Check them out at randomactrecords.com. Okay, welcome back. My name is Shelley Overton, and you're listening to the Astro Energy Show on Blog Talk Radio. And it's good to have you here. I'm going to just tell you real quick, I looked this up while we were on break. So... For a relationship chart, it says the concept is simple, and that is it's a horoscope made up of the midpoint in time and space between the natal charts of two different persons. So um, it's a physical mathematical time midpoint that takes on a life of its own. A composite chart is a horoscope made up of the mutual midpoints between the natal charts of two different persons. The composite sun is located at the midpoint between the two natal suns. The composite moon is the midpoint between the two natal moons. So do you see the difference between the two? (laughs) This is really subtle. Um, So physical mathematical time midpoint in life And also then the other one is the composite, which is the midpoint in number. So it's really subtle. No wonder I didn't remember what it was. So there you go. Okay, I hope that helped. Anyway, let's take another call. 913. Hi, who is this? Hi, Shelly. This is Andy calling. How are you doing? Hi, Andy. Doing well, doing well. What's up in your cute little world? (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm in the midst of writing a big um, comprehensive exam for school. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's kind of stressful. I've had mm-hmm. a hard time, I think, concentrating, but I'm mm-hmm. actually headed down to the library to just, you know, okay, so strap you're a teacher? in and buckle down. I, again, you're no, a teacher I'm actually professor? A, I'm a student. I'm a student, oh. actually. Um, I'm in okay. grad school. Oh, and, okay. Um, the, yeah, the exam is going to be due the morning of the 29th. Um, so I'm just okay. kind of hoping that it'll get a little bit easier to concentrate. It's, I feel like I've been so scattered. Um, That's because yeah. Neptune is on your Saturn, right on the cusp of the ninth house, which represents education, and it is directly squaring. Your Saturn is squaring Mercury, and so is Neptune because uh-huh. it's right on your Saturn, and Mercury is your ability to think and communicate, and it's squaring Neptune and Saturn, which are right at the same point over there in Pisces. So let me tell you, again, I've said this in the past, I have Mercury in Virgo, Neptune is directly opposite my Mercury in Virgo. Mercury in Virgo is very cognizant, very analytical. 
Pisces, Neptune is totally making me a space case. So it doesn't <laughs> surprise me that it's making you a space case too. So, um, yes. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, I think there's, my question actually is about work and I'm mm-hmm. really coming to some, I do uh, work part time and I'm kind of on the verge of firing them, so to speak. And I, I'm really learning a lot lately mm-hmm. in kind of a Pluto way about mm-hmm. <laughs> what it is, what's my worth, you know, what am I right. worth, um, mm-hmm. and what kinds, what makes me happy, where do I go to my happy place in work, and I, mm-hmm. um, so I'm thinking that perhaps it's time to let go of some folks that don't value what I do and open up some space um, to bring some new things in where Mm -hmm. I can contribute, you know, and Mm -hmm. be valued. So it's, you know, I have a little bit of, (laughs) (laughs) I guess, so I guess my question for you is um, Mm -hmm. if I kind of say, you know, this isn't working, when would the next opportunity, the opportunities look good to bring in another um, good job, part time. Um, another good job, part time. Okay, let's just look at that. So, Mars is in Cancer right now, which is taking action. But you know what's really striking and kind of ironic? I chuckled when you said it's Plutonian. You have Pluto in your house of work. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why. Um, okay. And interestingly, it's in Capricorn, which is the energy of the elderly. And so yep. I don't know if you have any opportunities that's, to do that, but having Capricorn. That's what almost, I do. Yeah, I, the whole I work time. with uh, older folks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely, and I see why, you know, like you're starting to feel that because, again, you know, when I talk about Saturn and Scorpio, it's about commitment and value and personal value, intrinsic value. Like, am I having a reflection financially of what I feel I'm worth. And that was the issue when Saturn went through Scorpio, you know, for two and a half years until the end of last year, December 26th, that moved into Sagittarius. Now it has through the end of September and you're feeling that energy. And because they are in mutual reception again, and I know I said this before, and I don't know if you know that concept, Pluto is in, um, Capricorn sign, the sign of Capricorn, and its ruler Saturn is in Pluto's sign, which is Scorpio. So they talk to each other, and they're talking about the structure, about intrinsic value, and for you, it's in work, so you're talking about work. Now, when you're looking to find work, um, you just want a part-time job, you said. Um, right. Have you, I, have you, I, yeah, because of ahead. school commitments at the moment, mm-hmm. it's pretty it's pretty um, rough as I head towards the dissertation so, okay. Well, um, Mars is in Cancer. I could full time, I guess, but uh huh. You know, well, no, I understand my the, education the part time energy. You know, Mercury in Gemini doesn't have the staying power for much more than little snippets of attention, and right. especially squaring Neptune, it's like forget about it. You know. Um, <laughs> let me just look at when Mercury gets to Cancer. That will help you, and a, a little bit. It's really going to help when Mercury gets to Leo, okay? Right now, Venus is going in your house of money. So everything in your chart's telling me you should do something creative and behind the scenes. And it doesn't necessarily say you should get a job somewhere out in the public. I mean, I'm looking, I'm sitting here killing time, not killing time, but um, (laughs) trying to find it. And all I'm seeing is... Mars conjunct sun in your 12th house in Cancer, which Cancer rules home and family. 12th is the hidden, and it's all water. So water is taking time away, being out of the mainstream. Venus is in Leo at the degree of your cusp of the second house of money. Conjunct Jupiter, which is fortune, creativity, gambling, taking risks, and it's in money. So um, when I see Leo with money, it's about being very gregarious, taking the lead, telling basically telling people what they need, not waiting for them to tell you. And uh-huh. okay. um, yeah, Jupiter and Leo and your house of money. I mean, now's the time. I mean, I I hate to say it, but you know, buy a lot of ticket kind of energy. It's 
it's about that. It's about like taking sure, the risk, sure. taking, you know, making your own opportunities with money. And it's about creativity. Saturn is in your house of own ruled by Leo, the fifth house. And it's not going back into your fourth, thankfully, now that he's retrograde. He's only going to stay there. And he's saying value creativity. And also Ooh, that's okay. a connection, interestingly and posingly, to children. So you have mm-hmm. at work right now, you work with the elderly, but Saturn's saying you need to have a creative, childlike, playful side. And Mars is saying, yes, it's about nurturing and nurturing the self and nurturing your spirit because it's in the 12th. So that's what I see for you. And then Neptune up on your Saturn is also saying there's an intuitive side and commit to spirit. Everything in your chart saying commit to playfulness, being at home, being in a nurturing place, and to your spirit. And by the time Jupiter hits Virgo in September, it's going to be about, I'm getting like librarian energy. So some type of, um, some type <laughs> that was of my previous career. <laughs> well, what the heck? I can't tell you anything new. It's all in your chart. You already lived it. So yeah, it's again, I, it's, I'm involved in a lot of research. So okay. it's interesting you say behind the scenes. I mean, I do a lot. That's another part-time position is, Mm-hmm. Um, involved in research and co-authoring publications and proofreading and, you know, um, looking at research proposals and things like that. So mm-hmm. right. that's another aspect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do wish to be a service, you know, I mean, that's really some way of easing suffering. And I just don't know if it's um, by showing up, like, you know, you mentioned individually, personally, or is it doing things behind the scenes to make this is what I see. I think you're going to, I think you need to work for yourself doing consultation for people and um, possibly, I don't know if you have any of this energy in your chart because of the Virgo energy, um, like medical consultation or something that helps people get to the heart of, Oh, that would make sense too. Um, Wow, you could do. Do you have any interest in health, like uh, alternative health modalities? Uh huh. I sure do. Okay, Reiki would be awesome because you have Uranus, which is an air, the planet that rules Aquarius, an air sign, in Virgo health, and Uranus is very alternative. Uranus doesn't it follows the beat of its own drummer in the third house, which is. The Gemini house, also air energy and air. Whenever I see air connections, I I think Reiki because Reiki is pure energy. It's about, or, you know, Qigong too, anything that's Mm -hmm. energetic. Mm -hmm. um, That would work really well. And then you have the Virgo health aspect, but you also have a conjunction of Mars to Uranus. And then literally 11, 13, and 14, all Virgo, Uranus, Mars, Pluto. Tremendous amount of power. Again, like I said, Jupiter hits all that, hits our our early to mid-60s Uranus-Pluto conjunction, and it's changing everything. Everything becomes our generation, which is the last, well, 64 is the year I was born. It's the last year of the baby boom generation. So, uh-huh. so many people were born in the early to mid-60s, and they have this this energy in their chart. So when Jupiter touches that off it's going to be phenomenal it expands all of that and it's going to expand that whole house for you it's going to expand teaching this also teaching alternative health modalities or teaching combined with research because of the pluto energy it's all about knowledge and wisdom and imparting it it's about health and it's about entrepreneurship and taking action and Mars, the Mars energy in this part of your chart that's getting triggered is going to be the ability to do something about it. And Virgo loves to communicate. Virgo loves to talk and teach. So all that Great. energy together tells me that you should look to, if if you want to look towards something that I think is going to be another path coming around for you, it's an opposition to Saturn. So there's the dynamic of helping and Saturn for you is in your house of research, the eighth house. And so there's, and it's also psychic because it's 
Pisces. So you have this strong intuitive side. Neptune's directly on your Saturn right now, up directly opposing Uranus, which is having the ability to call your own shots, your own say, and it's in health. So all of that comes together, and Jupiter hits it by the end of this year. Again, October, it was 13 degrees, which I think I just said October 14th, 15th, it hits 13. So that's when it'll be great. Huge, well, huge thank shift. Thank you so much. And it's going to happen probably oh. again. You're welcome. It'll also be triggered again when Jupiter retrogrades next year. Let me just lift that up for you real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, in April of next year, you'll feel it again. So you'll hit it. You'll get that wake-up call. You'll go backwards a little bit about money. Money's going to be your issue. Um, be, in the beginning of next year, you're going to be like, but how do I earn a living at this? You'll get it because by April – it's just going to come together, okay? So just don't worry about it. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Good talking to you again. All right. You Bye. Too. Bye-bye. Okay. So let's see. We've got 914. That was 913. This is 914. How are you? Hi, Shelly. How are you? Melissa Good. from New York. Yes, you are. <laughs> so what can I do for you? Well, I went out on a date yesterday for a awesome. first time with a guy, and he Perfect. he's a Leo like me. Of course he is. And his birthday <laughs> is July 26th. Okay. And I don't know, it's like we've seen each other, it's like I felt like, uh, you knew felt like um, when I kissed him, I felt like I was, like, you know, you feel like you're meditating, you know how like you never right. can get down type of feel? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to know, um... Do you see, like, this working out? Because I know sometimes people say, like, um, when you have fire signs, it's, you know, sometimes it doesn't go well because, of, you know, everybody wants to be the boss. <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry. I just muted myself oh, by okay. accident. Okay. Yes. Just to give you an idea of what's going on in your chart, you have a 15-degree mm-hmm. Leo rising and Venus is at 16, which means she just came out of the 12th house for you and into the first house. Perfect time for a first date. You are yourself. Love is in your first house. He's seeing you. I mean, the energy of who you are, it's like your natal sun is in your first house and your rising sign is Leo. So this is who you are. He's seeing you for who you are. And normally, like, if it's just the rising sign, but your son's somewhere else, it's like, oh, you think you know me. You see who you want to see. He sees you for who you are, and he's attracted. He can't help but be attracted. Venus is conjunct Jupiter in, on both your sons. It's like combustion. So, yes, I think that's fabulous. Um, do you know what year he was born? Um. I think he's 33, because I'm 31, so he's 33. So probably like that's like what, like a. He's 85. Probably like, what? Yeah. 1985. Okay. Do you know where he was born? Um, not that I know of. Um, you did- no, he's from Port Chester. <laughs> he's from Port Chester, New York. Okay. Okay. I didn't cool. get to ask him about like his birth and everything, oh, but okay. I know that he. I know that I'm 31 and he's 33, so he's probably maybe. Maybe that's what, like 1980 okay. or 1979, probably, right? Oh, he's older. I'm sorry. I went the opposite direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hang on. I'm just trying to track down Fort Chester. I don't have Fort Chester in my database. That's amazing. Fort Chester, New York. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, strange. I don't know why it's not there, and I have no clue where Fort Chester is, so I can't even get it. Oh, no. Not Fort Chester. Port Chester. Oh, Port. Well, that might be why yeah. I don't see it. There you go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's called hearing issues, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's just see. Let's do a sunrise chart and see what it looks like for him. Okay. Okay, so he's got Gemini, Mars in 29 degrees Gemini. And where's yours? I'm going to find I, I've got so many charts open now. Hang on. Let me just see if I can get him. And and my computer did this. I don't know. I'm having such an issue with Mercury today. So you said he was born July? 26? July 26th. Mm-hmm. 19. You said you think 79? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let's just do that. 
Okay, because I my computer is quirky at times. If I put in an atlas information after, then it'll erase the date I just put in. It's just odd that way. Okay, so his moon is on your sun, pretty good, and his sun is on your Mars, which is pretty good. <laughs> um, you both have Neptune and Sagittarius, which is good because you have the same kind of ideals. Um so you have a lot of Sag. He has Uranus in Scorpio retrograde. So that may mean that he can be very caught up in the, well, for you it's family. Like there's definitely some, there might be a bit of disconnectedness he has to your family. But mm-hmm. that's not like anything that necessarily um, unless you're looking to have a family. Are you looking to have a family? Um, well, I don't know. I mean I I mean I had I I I had a daughter, but she mm-hmm. passed away in February. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. And she was one years old. But um oh, I told funny. I explained to him like in person to tell him and he yeah. was fine with that. Um oh. I don't I mean for me, um huh. I feel like if you're meant to have kids, it happens. Uh-huh. So I just never put a, um, you know. I mean, but it'd be nice, though. I would love to get married, though, or something like that. Uh huh. Well, he's got, if he was born in 79, like you think he is, he's got Saturn mm-hmm. and Virgo. They don't, oh, this is interesting. Um, Virgo, I find, like, Virgo's, the Virgo energy doesn't tend to be really um, warm and fuzzy about kids. But they Mm -hmm. are amazing parents when they have them. So Saturn in Virgo, um, he might be a little uptight about children. Has he said anything? Um, No, he hasn't said anything about children. Okay. But his Saturn's a few degrees away, and there's the uh, Saturn-Venus conjunction. Saturn in Virgo, this is someone who is very much committed to career and work. So um, let me see where his Mars is. Mars in Gemini. He's got Mars conjunct your north node. Um, North node is energy that you need to learn the fortunate side of living this life. Your south node brings in energy from the past that you are very familiar with. And he Mm -hmm. has Neptune fairly close within five degrees of your south node. So there's probably some type of karmic energy for you, and it's in the sign of Sagittarius. So I would definitely say there's like an idealized view of him. But Mm -hmm. um, he does have Neptune retrograde, so do you. So you might not be as delusional about each other in romance as someone with a Neptune and Sagittarius direct. Okay? Uh, The retrograde gives you the ability to see more how they are. What I would say to you um i do you want me to be blunt i i I want you to be blunt i like when you're just honest and straightforward okay (laughs) i i see a lot of good in the charts but i also Mm -hmm. see a mars and gemini which to me says that he may have a difficult time being faithful Like the biggest hand in the cookie jar, too much. Yeah, Mars and Gemini, (laughs) probably the number one spot I would say someone who's unfaithful would have that. Yep. So, um, and Neptune and Sagittarius, like Sagittarius is probably number two. No offense to those who have that. But it's just the energy of Gemini is like they, they're like sexually, Mars is sex. Gemini cannot just do one thing they need constant stimulation of more than one because it's that multiplicity and you put mars there and it's like they're oh i like that oh i like that too oh and when they go there they're there they're not where they were they're where they are so it's just yeah i'm gonna say real quick hold on a minute Goodbye to everybody. I can't believe how fast this hour has flown today. But thank you for listening, and please do call back next week, and I will try and get in more callers next week. But I'm going to finish up with you and Melissa, and and then I'm just letting everyone know that it's going to cut off here in about 40 seconds. So I want to finish up with you first, though. But, yeah, um, 
I mean, there's so much good stuff too. That's what's really hard about it. This is someone who's probably that person that triggers you and is difficult to pull away from. But, um, yeah. Did you listen to what he said when you talked to him? I find that... Um, um, when like, me and him talked, we had mm-hmm. like a we had a breakfast date, uh-huh. and um, we we had like a basically we we ate the same stuff like in common like what we like to eat and stuff uh-huh. like that. Um, I didn't talk to him about kids or with about like um, what he wants. I just. Uh-huh. And he lives, he's not that far from me. He's like four miles away from me. But the town he lives in is a very nice, it's a nice, pleasant town. And um, what else can I say about him? I met him on a dating site. But the thing about the Uh dating site is I went and I deleted the whole thing because I said, you know what, I want to bump into somebody. And for some reason I decided to leave my number with him before I delete because I've been talking to him through the whole Uh time. And so he called me, and we went out. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, pretty, but he was very generous, not uh-huh. someone that was, like, um... Well, that's Leo. <laughs> yeah. That's Leo anyway. I'm like that, right. too. Like, if you want to go ahead, it's fine. Well, okay, so he has a connection. Like, the Venus and Cancer, there's definitely stuff going on with Mom, mm-hmm. whether he... I wouldn't say he doesn't get along with mom. I think he's probably a mama's boy, so to speak. I don't know if I like to use that terminology, but he's connected to his mom. You may not know that, how deep it goes, and um, so that she's probably going to be an influence. And then um, he's got Moon and Leo. All the Leo in him, he probably wants kids. I would say even though he has Saturn and Virgo, this is somebody who wants kids, but he's probably going to be a workaholic once, even though, you know, if he has them, you've got Venus and Virgo. So there may be some, you know, that's probably part of your attraction because, you know, he's got that strong sense of work and 